There's a helicopter over. There. There's an airplane. There's two helicopters. No. There, there's go fast boats like the like the Fort Lauderdale police or Coast Guard. What are y'all Miami, doing down here? Miami Dade, ATF. Like I mean, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny. The whole the whole crew's there. Everybody but Mickey Mouse didn't see him. I guess he's still at Disney World. But anyway. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hey Now Bound Podcast. I'm Philip. I'm Shane. I'm Casey Young. I'm Brian. These are our first two contenders. You see, we have taken the podcast on the road. Mobile. We're in center Alabama today for the annual Chitlin or Chitterling cookout. And so we're going to have a host of storytellers. So y'all just sit back, relax. And get ready to have a few laughs with us. We're going to start off here with Casey. I don't know if y'all can tell or if, if, if anybody's ever mentioned to you when they were talking about me, but I'm I, I'm a little overweight. <laughs> uh, just a little. And one of the funniest stories about being a big guy, we went to Six Flags. Me, my brothers, and their kids, my kids. And uh, everything was going well. And we got in there and... Uh, the first ride we tried to ride was the Superman. And I don't know if you know or not, but the Superman, you lay down vertical when you're riding it. Well, the little boy that was trying to put me in it was about 17, 18 years old, and he's trying to force that thing shut. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't think it's going to fasten, sir, and I, don't, I can't let you ride it if it won't fasten. And I looked at him, and I said, do you think I want to ride it if it won't fasten? Do you think I want to go flying through there? So anyway, I get off of that one. We go around, we're on the Batman. Guy trying to get me in there. And this guy was a little more plain spoken. He said, there's just too much meat there, man. We can't, we, can't, we can't get you in. I said, well, okay. Well, we get around the one called the Georgia Scorcher, and you sit on a bicycle seat, and you got this thing that comes down like this. Well, the, And I'd just like not been able to ride much because I was so big. The guy gets over there, and he's pushing, he's pushing. And uh, he says, I can't get it to latch. And I had watched this one. And being of science, I knew that centrifugal force was going to hold me in that seat. So I said, let him out. And I pointed at my brother. I said, what? I said, let him out. And my brother comes over there and puts his back against the guy in front of me and puts his foot on that thing and goes, Kunk. and I looked at the guy and said, I'm ready. Good <laughs> night. <laughs> and it was one millimeter of metal clicked over another, and we rode that thing. But it's just it's just frustrating, you know? and, I, and I thought about I thought about a lawsuit, you know, against Six Flags yeah. over Georgia mm-hmm. LLC or INC or whatever they are. Mm-hmm. But my lawyer said it would never work. Lawyer wouldn't let you let you let you go. No, he thought that they would like maybe want to lose weight or something, and I don't do that. I have one question: Were you nervous at all during the ride? Yes. Not so much because it was the way the loops are and everything. It was holding, you know, the the force was pushing the end of the chair. Yeah, it was braver man than I. It was it was real fun. One night, and I and I told him I was going to tell tell this one on him. Evan and I had come up here. I I went to school with Evan in engineering school, and and that's how I met Brian through Evan. We went jug fishing one night (laughs) from Brian's. Lake House, we put in over there, and we got some jugs put out. Anybody that knows what jug fishing is, it's you you tie a hook to a well. It was actually called noodling. We were using pool noodle pool noodles. You tie it to a pool noodle, drop it, and it just floats around the lake until a catfish comes along and gets it. And it starts bobbing and starts bobbing up and down. Well, we had let them soak that night. You know, we were going to go back out there, and Evan's driving the boat, and Brian is up in the front of the boat using spotlight trying to find noodles that are floating around in the, in the in the lake and he he he's i'm in the middle and i'm looking you know we're just chit-chatting and and i see brian brian focuses on something but it's not a pool noodle i said what is he what does he do and he's just he's laser beam that light on it well it's a it's a snake going mm. down in, in the lake he's fixing to lay hands <laughs> and i said what? i said brian is fixing to catch that snake oh, i yeah. knew what he was gonna do yeah, he's gonna catch it well evan goes by it and Brian just keeps watching it. And Brian says, hey, I want to catch that snake. <laughs> Evan didn't didn't question, didn't say maybe we shouldn't. He just turned the boat around like, 
Absolutely. You get to catch a snake, big guy. He goes, peels that boat right around, and I'm going, Evan, don't do not do it. Don't, don't let him catch the snake. Just like we're having a good night. Leave the snake alone. No problem, right? I mean, I don't, I'm not afraid of snakes, but I don't like snakes enough to grab and lay hands on them, as Big O just said. So, Brian, Brian's going to go catch the snake. So, here comes Evan. He, he makes a circle. Brian finds it with a spotlight again. Evan peels right beside it. I mean, professional. Just lays it right down the side of it. And this is a bass boat, by the way. That's right. In a bass boat. And 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 and, and Evan kind of idles down, gets the right speed, and we're going down it. And Brian reaches down and gets a hold of the snake. Mm-mm. What he does not compensate for, though, Big O, is the speed of the boat. So the speed of the boat, Evan had idled back enough to where it slowed down. Brian thought he was getting it about the head. He gets it about the middle of the body. Yeah, two inches too short. <laughs> And he picks it up, and he's looking at the snake. I'm looking at Brian, and I'm I'm just shaking my head. And in slow motion, that snake just turns around and uh-uh. goes. It, I mean, it was just as slow as it could, like that right there. Guess what Brian does? Oh, <laughs> snake. my goodness. Straight up, he said, it bit me. It bit me. I said, what did you think it was going to do? What brand of snake was it? Hot. It was a water snake, just Mr. Regular Mr. Water Casey. Snake. Yeah. But let me tell you what happened after that. His mind, We talked about the power of the mind, right, Phil? Brian says, my hand's going numb. Mm-hmm. My hand's going numb. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm saying, you dummy, it was a water snake. Your hand ain't going dumb. It ain't going numb. It's going dumb. It is, for sure. My hand's going numb. My hand's going numb. And he had to sit down, take him a deep breath, and everything was fine after about five minutes, you know. But I said, it was a water snake. But why did you want to catch it? It bit me. Now, I got to know that. Great question. Why, why did, did you, you want to catch, catch that? I thought I could do it. It just needed caught, didn't it? So I'm, I, I'm not afraid of catching a snake. And uh, I've caught many before and since, never in the water. <laughs> that was so the last time. I, I now know I can't catch one out of the water. Oh, and that, uh, in the water is, is where they live, you know. Yeah. I had a, a friend of mine, Kevin Stewart. I, we've talked about him I know. Before. I wish Kevin was here today. <clears throat> Kevin went to the beach one year, and they were fishing off the off the beach. And uh, Kevin hooks about a, a four-foot shark just – Right there, early morning beach hours, and a friend of ours lives in Bay Manette, so he's fished on that beach and he's caught sharks, mm-hmm. and he he understands the what goes on when you're when you're doing that. Yeah. So, uh, Kevin get they get it up there to to the sharks dragging the bottom, and they're afraid it's going to break the line. And Kevin, much like uh, Brian, he is not afraid of anything. He goes, uh, he says, here, hold this pole. He says, well, he's our buddy from Robert's Dell says, what are you going to do? He says, I'm going to go out there and get a hold of his tail, and I'm going to snake him up here on the bank. He says, uh, well, uh, you know, I, I don't think I'd do that. He said, them things can outdo you in the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. They outdid him in the water, you know? didn't they? But uh, Kevin, no, he got out there and got a hold of his tail, and it, of course, tried to bite him, and he's mm-hmm. kind of fending it off and gets it up on the bank, and we get you know, we eat shark steaks, long story short, but but you got to watch them because they can't outdo you in the water. The other thing he's caught, we we were we were we were fishing one day down in or we were trying to go grab them is what we were trying to do. And he looked there's a hollow log down across the creek down here. He looks in the log, there's a raccoon. Mm. And I, he said, There's a raccoon in there. I said, Yeah, let's just leave it. <laughs> yeah, Good place for it to be. <laughs> No, let's, he can't just leave it. Let's stick our hand in his he buzz He stuck saw. his hand in a hollow log <laughs> after a raccoon. Yeah. Peels yeah. it out of there. Yeah. It's going crazy. <laughs> you know, and, he's, uh, and then he just throws it up in the bank. I'm impressed with your raccoon voice. That was good. <laughs> well, I, it, was, it, it was it was it was, it was ingrained years, in my mind yeah, when I was the fear that I felt. But that's years of practice. I mean, you're a coon hunter, right? I mean, you don't just, you don't lose years that. Of that's how you get him. That's how you get him to look at you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably the most interesting thing caught. Uh, speaking of the creek, we were noodling after catfish. If you don't know what that is, is when you stick your hand up a, a hollow log. There's a guy that's here today. His name's Donnie Walker Hill. He, he, tell us about it's, that. This guy and his brother taught me how to do this. So you go up under a hollow log, a hollow bank, um, and you stick your hand, and those catfish will 
That is the stupidest well, just thing I've destroy, ever seen. Destroy your hand. That sounds and, great. And <laughs> so I'm I'm checking for new holes, you know, up under the bank, going down, checking for holes. And I'm walking, you know, I'm in knee deep water. And uh, I see a fish, a big one, dart out of the bank. I'm thinking it's a big old catfish. Not fish. And where it was headed, the water was so shallow, it couldn't, you know, it couldn't swim fast. So I decided. I'm going to run after the fish that's in the water. So I run after it and I'm catching up to it because the creek is moving pretty fast. And, uh, and I reach down and grab this catfish by the tail. Sure. And I grab it, pull it up. It was a beaver. Mm. <laughs> Had you something in, didn't you? So I let go real fast. <laughs> let go real And then fast. I said, while I'm here, grab him again. And I reached down and grabbed the beaver. <laughs> while I'm here, <laughs> well, catch him again. <laughs> grab this beaver by the tail and walk uh, it to the bank. I, re- I remember getting that picture. Yeah. Somebody yeah, took a that. picture for you. Yeah. Holding the beaver and sends it. I said, what are you doing with the beaver? What did oh, it do? It. What was it doing when you had it by the tail? The, the beaver was trying to gnaw my little skinny arm off right here. <laughs> did bite. he get you? No. You got to hold him out. Oh, you got to yeah. hold him out. Yeah. That's, that is the, the key to catching beavers. Is it, could you have swung? Was it too big? Could you swing it like a possum? When you catch a possum, you know you got to Well, swing so this it. beaver had some meat on him. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and he couldn't hardly get up his own body, you know, yeah, like yeah. the snake could. Yeah, like me. I can't turn. So, <laughs> can't get back into so you just have to hold him out far enough. And yeah, well, that's down. some advice I'll never take. I will <laughs> never know what it's like. Beaver. Will not never. I will never know what it's like catching a live beaver. Absolutely not. Never say never. One of my that's former students. One. one of my former students. Uh, super kid. I mean, he was just a, a go getter. Worked hard. Do anything he wanted to do. Little bit on the outlaw side. Sometimes you know you kind of had to watch him. He's standing right there. Yeah, but. <clears throat> Uh, he had my son in class because he made a PE teacher. I had inspired him to be an educator, I think. So, I was in his class and they had the PTA hot dog supper or something <laughs> down there. So, me and I go with Scott and we cook hot dogs. <laughs> we get the hot dogs cooked and we borrowed a friend of ours, Big Grill. We got it hooked to the back of Skylar's truck. He said, jump in, let's take his grill home. And I told my wife, I said, y'all just go on home and I'll get Skylar to drop me off. So we get back to the house. And we're sitting there. We pull up, and I reach to open the door, and he grabs me by the leg like that. I said, "What?" He said, uh, "He said we close, ain't we, buddy?" I said, uh, "Yes, yeah, Skyler, I mean, we close." He said, uh, <laughs> "He said no, we we're like we're like brothers." <laughs> I said, "Well, I think more like uncle nephew, you know, something like that." I said, "He." You know, we, we buddies. I do whatever. And I'm thinking he's tuning up to tell me he's had to paddle my son or something, you know, in class. Yeah. He says, well, I, I got something I need to tell you. I'm like, well, spit it out. What is it? He said, the other night, me and my buddy was shooting our bows. And I was headed back over to the house and I run over a big old beaver. And my neck almost snapped off. I looked at him. I said, where's the beaver, Skylar? <laughs> he said, uh. <laughs> And the headlights are shining on my Jeep. I, he said, it's it's right there in the back of that Jeep. I said, when did you run over it? He said, he said I run over it Sunday, and this is like Wednesday or Thursday. Oh. And it's August. He said, I run over it Sunday, man. He said, but I really thought you would drive that Jeep to school Monday morning. I said, well, I had to do something else in my truck. I didn't drive the Jeep. Well, what about Tuesday? Why didn't he say something else? I need to pull a trailer or something. I didn't need the Jeep. forgot about it. I said, well, ain't the one thing to do. I mean, you're supposed to haul that beaver off. <laughs> so we go and we open the back thing, back of that thing up. Luckily, thank the Lord, not one ounce, not one drop of, of beaver juice. Of juice had come <laughs> out of the beaver. <clears throat> we go and I open that, and it almost made the whole thing worth it because when I opened the back door of that Jeep, Skylar threw up everything, <laughs> everything that he had ate since the second grade. I saw nerd skittles, everything. everything he had ate was in my yard. Fruit roll ups. No. So we get in the jeep with the beaver, and we take it off and we throw the beaver away. Well, I left the windows down. Left the windows down that night. I go out, and this is my back and forth to work vehicle. I'm saving my 
10 year old truck i don't want to put no miles on it <laughs> so we go i drive the thing next day and i'm like man it's awful i get down to the school and i, I ask our auto body guys working tech school at the time i said i said is there anything we can get that smell out of that truck with he said i don't know he said i've heard coffee grounds and baking soda so i went and bought like 50 dollars worth of coffee grounds and baking soda and just filled the floorboard up he said leave them in there for two or three days and then vacuum them out and it wasn't no two or three days. You couldn't no. wait. So I went to a professional, the Gator Man downtown that does the car washes. Mm-hmm. I said, I need, I got a smell I can't get rid of. He said, I got something just for it. He sprays this stuff in there. And we're standing there talking. I pay him. Get in the truck, Jeep, whatever it was, start driving back down to the school. And I'm like, man, this thing, this has worked. And this is at lunchtime. I roll them windows up, go mm. in. It comes a little shower of rain that afternoon. I come back out and rolled them windows down and the beaver was back on top. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about rain and supreme. <laughs> I took that I took that thing over, let old Gator Man spray it one more time, and took it directly to the used car lot. Right. And got to whatever him. I could get. Trade it, was it out. Done, done with that. I wondered what happened to the Jeep. Had to go. Had Did you go. send Skylar a bill for all that coffee and cleaning? I got it out of him. He just don't know it. <laughs> okay. He just don't even know it yet. Do you remember about something about one ended up in the main street out there in center? What's the statute of limitations on something like that? I think it's passed. Okay. Surely. Let it rip. So we're under the a bridge in Cherokee County, unnamed bridge. Unnamed bridge. Unnamed bridge. And we, I don't know what we're doing. We're riding around and it's midnight. You know, that's what I don't teenagers do. And uh, so we see a beaver. And every teenager at that point in time had a, a firearm of some sort in the vehicle. Sure. So we shot the beaver because, you know, we just want to be good conservationists. That's right. They're a nuisance. They're a nuisance to many farmers around the county. And uh, we scooped the beaver out of the water. And then we decide, you know, what are we going to do with the beaver? And this is midnight, one o'clock. So we throw the beaver on the hood of the Jeep. And this Not is a Jeep, Jeep Wrangler. This is a different Jeep. <laughs> no Jeep man. Wrangler. <laughs> Not big old Jeep. And uh, start driving around. And we decide, well, you know, what kind of story could we tell by throwing this beaver right in downtown center in front of the courthouse? It's only natural. That's what we do. It's right on the, the yellow lines in the middle of the road. <laughs> Uh, nowhere near water. There's no water anywhere. So that's where we put it, and we're riding around, and uh, we just so happen to have a scanner in the in the vehicle, a radio, police radio, and we we hear at, at one in the morning, we go right back by, and there are blue lights everywhere, all over, and we turn the scanner on, and we hear a guy cop talking about you know. This beaver has gone run over, gotten run over in the middle of the road about two miles from the nearest creek. Yeah. He was a traveling man. Something I'd know to tell. And they had lighted up the town with blue lights at one in the morning. Over. It, over the beaver. The beaver. In the middle of the road. Mm. What, a wayward traveler. But but what, what that is, is that is the picture of a small town. Amen. What else is going on at one o'clock in the morning? At most, at most of these places we know in Alabama, mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. So for them to find a, a big old beaver dead in the road, what in the world is going on? There must be some sort of zombie outbreak. Yeah, we need to be thankful that that's the kind of disruption. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Very similar story, and I wasn't involved in that. They were a good bit younger than me. I, I was at Auburn, and we were, me and several of us that worked for the swine nutrition unit, which, which means we fed hogs. I was going to say, uh, that is a church stuff way to yeah. say hog feeder. Yeah, we fed hogs. So, in the finishing house is where the hogs go for their last stop before they go for the lonely ride. So, we've got all of these hogs and all this corn and all these rats. I'm talking about millions. Mm-hmm. And they ain't no poison. They they would run a bobcat out of there. I mean, a bobcat ain't even killing these rats. They're bad. They're bad so dudes. about three nights a week, we would go up there after hours illegally because we're not supposed to be up there. And me being one of the larger Americans, I would pick those big feeders up just a little bit, and then big rats would run out. And the guys that were more sporty, 
we'll say, agile. Brian's Brian kind of size. They had little old privet poles we'd cut, and little privet poles about that long, and they would do the rats in with the pole. Well, we always had more rat carcasses than we really needed because, I mean, what are you going to do with rat carcasses? Mm -hmm. One night that we went, instead of taking them down there and dumping them in the woods for the possums to eat, we set a five-gallon bucket full, full of rats in the bed of the truck. Well, I was riding in the bed of the truck, and I thought it'd be just so naturally funny <laughs> right there on Wire Road in front of the vet school to just start pitching them rats out. <laughs> <laughs> so we went down through there pitching them. We all, hey, hey, woo, boy, it's fine. You know? Well, the next day, it's like news all over campus. Oh, There's rat a invasion. rat infestation, infestation. <laughs> at the... <laughs> at the... Uh, vet school and the road was completely just slicked over greasy for about 60 yards down through there <laughs> oh, 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 rats. Oh, splattered man. rats there was articles in every paper that it was on the Auburn's little news network mm -hmm. they're, they're doing live reports from Wire Road where the wharf rat invasion <laughs> had started <laughs> and we're all like mm, no, nothing about don't that. know nothing about it after the 24 hours went by and I, my boss never spoke to me. Mm -hmm. He never said a word. He went to Texas A&M, and we were way below. You know, you go to Texas A&M, you got to say that with a lump in your throat and a tear in your eye. You, you're just better than everybody else, yeah. you know. And uh, he called all of us in for the first words we ever heard out of his mouth. To chew. <laughs> <laughs> he knew exactly knew when right he where the infestation comes from. That's a big old Lamar did that. <laughs> Great, Dave. <laughs> we got this close to losing our jobs feeding hogs. <laughs> he knew told. right away. Yeah, he knew. No question. It was so funny. I would have known too mm -hmm. if I'd have been anywhere in the vicinity <laughs> and you and knew you were in the vicinity. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Hey, we've had fun with y'all too. It's time to move on to the next ones. We appreciate your time. We're well, going to tell some more with uh, those other crew that's that's out here watching. Anxiously waiting. To anxiously get on waiting. Here. All right, round two. So Big O did get up, but he couldn't stand it. So he sat back down for some more stories. And then uh, we have Skylar here. Well, first off, like, what I do with my hands. Like, <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do the Nick Saban. That's fine. You know, cause all, right. Take, all, all right. right. All right. All right. All right. In, in a roundabout way, we ended up going on this big hunting store, uh, big hunting trip in, in Tennessee. So uh, I, I don't really know where we start, but it, it's during football season and it was the time crunch. We had a bunch of deer on camera and we've been feeding them. And, and I'd shot a deer the year before with my bow and, and couldn't find it. And yeah, I, I knew that that the chances of somebody killing a big deer that weekend was going to be really, really high. And for whatever reason... I know I'm not supposed to interrupt. That's okay. But this is going to be a co-told story here. So. Okay. So, <laughs> first of all, Skylar <laughs> is known... <laughs> Worldwide for being fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy. Not and Skyler. that's the beauty. That is the draw. That's why we love him because mm -hmm. you can call Skylar at 3 a.m. and say, the crappie are biting at the pier. Come that's on. Good. In 20 minutes, he's there. You know, we, he, just whatever you need to do. So, but anyway, this hunting trip was planned around both of us coach high school football. He coached high school football, and I wrote the plays down and showed them to the players. So, that's <laughs> that's the real story. But we were both on the coaching uh squad there so anyway the staff i guess i'd say so we had to go to a football game and friday night in locust fort Asheville, locust fort locust fort down to we, the house we left drove i had to drive the bus back and we left from the field house at about 1 a.m and we're taking a bath with wet wipes like we're going down no the road seat, like going yeah. down the road and we've got we're taking him a bath. you his, know what kind of bath they call that we can't say yeah, that no we can't say we've that got him his daddy and his wife and me in this in this uh truck and we've got a enclosed trailer with two four-wheelers <laughs> we get up there and it's time to hunt because this is in tennessee way up in tennessee we get up there and it's time to hunt so we unload the buggies we go and it's saturday morning we hunt nothing and we, we don't see a thing the next that afternoon we go lay around for a little bit. That afternoon we go back, we hunt. Don't see nothing. Squirrel, whatever. The next morning, we get up 
at daylight or for daylight, we could put on our hunting stuff and we got we've got a bath because we stayed at our we, grandmother's. And we've got a plan. Yeah, you know, we've mm-hmm. got to be out. No, 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 no. We didn't have this plan. If I'd have known this plan, I'd have stayed in the center. So we get up that morning. We get out of the truck at the hunting grounds, at the woods. Scholar had Schuyler a plan. Scholar says, well, we've got a plan. Schuyler. Our head coach is one of those guys that Schuyler you don't said. miss. Like, you you are there. Like, and if you're not there, it's like you might as well orchestrate the next 9-11 terrorist attack. Like, he, he is football only. That's the That's only thing it. he can do. Like, he can't. He can't drive. He can't. He can't cook. He can't. I don't even see how he gets dressed. He football season. He's football only. And his that's wife it. So dresses I, him. I mean, that's I, the only way around it. His wife has got to get him up and get him ready. And she is the best smelling woman <laughs> yeah. in the world. Yes, she smells wonderful. I've even but asked her, like, hey, what, what do you wear? She Go won't tell. You. She won't tell us. Like, I don't know how she smells like that, but she smells good. Yeah. So anyway, go on with your story. But he is just and, and to, to finish, kind of round that out. Our, our head coach was a heck of a good guy, <laughs> but yeah, he. But it was football first, the end. So no hunting in between. No. Skyler gets. We get out, put our feet on the ground, and he announces to the four of us, "Hey, we're going back. We're leaving here. At I'm, gonna seven be, o'clock. I'm gonna be in Center, Alabama. I'm gonna be in Center. It wasn't seven. I, we had to be back at two o'clock." Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to be in Center, Alabama at 2 o'clock. We've got to leave here no later than I think And I'm thinking, o'clock. I'm going to climb a tree, and I'm going to stay there till I kill a deer. Mm-hmm. No, no, we're leaving. we got to go. we got to get back for football. <laughs> so, and I'm thinking, can we not watch film for football? No. Any other time? Yeah. No, we can't. So, I climb up my tree, and I'm up there in the tree. Just, yeah, yeah, flash them, flash them, flash them, flash them. And I'm mad, you know. And I'm like, he's ain't even having a good he's drug time. me off Tennessee. I ain't slept three hours the whole time we've been here. And I'm sitting up there in that tree, and there's a squirrel. And it's it's about a 15, 20-yard poke. And I'm up there with a bow. And he's going around that tree. And I'm looking at my watch. He's going around that tree, and I'm looking for deer, and I'm looking at that squirrel, and I'm looking at my watch. Well, it gets about 15 minutes before Skyler's announced we got to leave, leave that morning. And I said, well, I guess I can oh, just hold old, hold old Skyler up a little bit. And I stand up when he goes on the backside of the tree, and he comes around, and he's looking. He goes back around the tree. I draw my bow. He goes back around the tree, and I aim it where I think he's going to come out. Pretty close. He comes back around. Blink. Shot the squirrel. Just dead killed him. Down the tree I go. And I'm not very athletic, you know. And and a climber is really a – I mean, that's a stretch for me, a climber. So I climb down the tree. A stretch? Yeah. A stretch is what them overalls are doing. (laughs) No, no. The fact that you hit the squirrel is a modern-day miracle. (laughs) I'm talking about climbing the tree. So I go down the tree, and it's not like I can just go down the tree. Oh, he can go down it. I got to go down it. I got to go back up The fact up that he it. chose to go down it. And then I got to go back down it. Safely. So, so I, I, I text Skylar before I start down the tree. Got one down. And he starts texting me. What is it? You know, is it a doe? Is it a buck? Is What is it? And I'm like, man, I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't, it was just a hair, boom, shot, gone, you know. So I climb down the tree and I go over there and I get that squirrel and I take off through the thickest brush and briars I can find. And I'm down on my hands and knees and I'm squeezing that squirrel, getting all the blood out of it that I can. And I'm laying down the blood track. And when I get, just squeeze it and wring it out. I wring that thing out like a dish rag and I throw the squirrel out into that brush. And I've went far from, well, it's 30 yards. And he, and, and about the time that I get the track laid, he's got his, stuff packed on the buggy and I hear the throttle on it come wide wow. up Woo-ah! and here he comes so I run back over the tree and, and I get about six foot up and then that way I can just act like I was coming down the tree yeah. when he got there you know and I go over there he gets there and he says which way to go I said it went right through yonder <laughs> right through yonder he said well how, did you hear it crash I said I think I did I think I heard it just right over there and uh, he said, well, let's see, where, where's your air? I said, I, probably laying right over there is where I shot it. He went over and he picked it up. He said, oh, no, that's dark blood. That ain't no good. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to talk me out of even tracking it because it's time to go to football. He said, no, nah, that's dark blood. Ain't no good. I said, man, we got to see if we can find it. He said, all right. So he stomps around and I get over where I know the blood is. And I say, hey, I think that's blood right there. And he hits all fours. Like a nose guard plugging a gap, and he starts crawling through them briars, <laughs> right where I've just been. 
And he's looking. There's blood. Here's some more blood. Here's some more blood. Here's some more blood. Oh, here's some. Here's right here. And in a minute, he crawls up over the squirrel. Oh. And it's right under his nose. <laughs> and his old neck gets long. He goes, there's a squirrel right here. <laughs> And I said, that's him. <laughs> that's him. <laughs> that's the one that's I shot. A, that's the squirrel right here. That's Great what we've been looking day. for. But I'm going to tell you something. That Ricky Ray, his daddy was with us that day, and he talked down to me all the way home for pulling that. <laughs> so we go to the Great Lakes, and uh, my stepdad can do anything. Like, it, it, if it can be done, he can do it. I mean, anything. And he's an Auburn graduate. Hey, and uh, we're, we're up hey. there tinkering around in his shop. And he's got this layout boat that he had made. And I'm thinking, man, if we had that, we can really put a beating on these things. And we've been watching layout videos. And, and there's no layout boats around here. Nobody's got them. And uh, I'm thinking, man, if we can if we can have that, we can, we can do some work. And... Uh, so we get him. We get we get the layout boat, and he's like, "Yeah, man, just take it. Don't worry about it." So we we get this just take it layout boat and put it in the boat, and we strike off up to up to uh, the Great Lakes, and we we put in in Port Huron, Michigan, and we go out there, and it's probably 25, 26 degrees outside, winds blowing 15, mm. 10, 15 miles an hour, conservative 10, 15 miles an hour, water's kind of white cap and perfect. Perfect weather for a duck hunter. And uh, I get in the boat, in the layout boat, and we've got the decoy set, and we've got some better rigging. Like, we're prepared for this trip in our mind. So I get in this boat, and they're just, you know, kind of hanging out right beside the shipping channel. And uh, I said, man, y'all go on somewhere. Go on. Get get the other way, because I'm, I'm fixing to shoot them now. I'm, I'm going to put on <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put on a <laughs> clinic. clinic. And... Uh, <laughs> So they they do that, and it's when they turn the wave, the wake or wave from the boat kind of kind of comes towards the boat and kind of caught me off guard, and it just fills up the boat, mm. and I'm like, oh no, mm. and I'm sitting in here up to my belly button in water. Let's recap: it's dark. Oh, it's dark. Okay, it's, it's pitch black dark, and my buddies, Let's recap. my buddies and my lifeline are going away oh, from me. No. So I just take my shotgun and do what every God fearing normal American would do. I start shooting at my buddies. <laughs> so I like, and I'm not like shooting up in the air. Like I'm trying to kill them. Like I'm shooting at them. So they'll know. They can see the flames. If they can't hear it, they can at least see the fire coming out of the barrel. And they're probably hundred yards away. And I'm shooting right. Boom, boom. Hey, boom, boom. And I'm I'm loading this automatic or this uh, over and under shotgun as fast as I can load it. And I'm I'm I'm. Like it, I'm taking on water. There's nothing I can do. Do so you finally, have a life jacket? We no need... life jacket. Oh, perfect. And so I just throw the shotgun down into into the boat in the water because you've always heard they won't sink. Well, this one has like it's not going to the bottom, but it's not on top. It's 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 <laughs> it's perfectly <laughs> it's perfectly level, buoyant yet not floating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not any of that. It's like a twenty day old egg. It won't float. So I've got my. I've got my <laughs> arms locked out, and I, I'm just help, help, and I am freezing, and my my hands are hurting, and I'm I'm up to water, like up to my forearms. Hypothermia setting in, and here they come back. And I'm like, all right, I just just be real still. And this, I mean, again, the wind's blowing, and I'm I'm trying not to capsize, and they just come pulling right up on top of me, and I have never in my life been so happy. To, to grab a hold of something yeah. not sinking. <laughs> and I grab a hold of that boat and they're they're trying to grab me. I said, just get your hands off of me. <laughs> and I, for a 265, 270 pound human being, I move well. You, know, like, yeah. you turned into Bo Jackson. Oh man, I'm talking about, look, hey. I mean, just, I look like a, like, I would love to have it on film. You like, in there? Oh, I, I mean, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in the boat. Mm -hmm. So I, once I realize, hey man, I'm safe. I'm safe. I, I, I've I've cheated death yet once again. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm still part of God's plan. I mean, this is this is this is going to work out. You know, we can pack our stuff up and go home. 
Brian chimes in and he's like, hey, make another lap around and uh, give me that dry box right there. I'll just take the top off of it and dip the water out. And I'm like, dude, you're wanting to get back in there? And he said, yeah. I said, you're not getting in that boat. He said, oh, yeah, I am. And I said, Brian, you've got a wife and kid at home. He said, (laughs) Well, they'll be there when I get back. And I said, yeah, but they don't want to go to your funeral. And he's like, man, I'll, it'll be fine. So Brian gets a dry box and starts dipping the water out of the of this homemade layout boat. And um, Homemade layout boat. And, and it's made out of Luan and fiberglass mm. and, spray, and spray painted gray. So anyway, he dips the water out. And, and Brian's, I mean, he's built like a third grade girl. So, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't weigh anything. And he just kind of sets sideways. And he gets in there and we... He, he he was the only one of us had guts enough to get back in it, but he ended up killing a bunch of ducks that morning, and, and, and it all worked out. Funny story about ag when we were in high school. We had a bunch of rowdy boys, like every ag department in the world. And uh, we had this uh, county agent, and his wife subbed anytime Ricky was out. We go in, and we're all seniors. Well, he, Ricky's left this little old paperwork assignment. We never did paperwork. We went shopping work, mm-hmm. you know. We go in that morning, and uh, she says, okay, guys, y'all go back there and get the livestock book out and turn the page, whatever, you know. And uh, my buddy, Eric, he says, that's not that's not for this class. She said, what do you mean? He said, this is the FFA choir class. <laughs> and we all looked at him. We was going with it, you know. He said, uh, he said, yeah, we practiced during this time getting ready for district contest. And there's no FFA choir. There's, that's not even a contest. Not even a contest. She don't know that. Mm-hmm. So Eric starts lining us up, and <laughs> some of them, some of the guys stand on front. Some of them stand in chairs, and then there's a row that stands on the shop uh, classroom tables behind us, and we're like a, a choir. Mm-hmm. And Eric gets in front of us, and he takes a little old piece of wood he come produced from somewhere, brings Ricky's podium over there, and he taps it like it. <laughs> He says, okay, she's a lady on three. One, two, three. And we all start singing, she's a lady down on love by Alabama. <laughs> Great. <Yeah. laughs> Listen, oh, that ain't even, lady. and that ain't even the end of it. We did this for 52 minutes. That's how long the class was. Practice. We sang one song after the other. And yeah. everybody, and if you didn't know it, they were just up there mouthing, you know. Yeah. And and uh, she's over there at the end of every one of them just, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's Y'all awesome. are so good. I can't wait to tell the ladies at the beauty shop about this. This is so good. Well, the next day, Ricky comes in. Well, hold on just a second. I mean, wouldn't you like to hear just a little bit of just she's a, a lady? Touch. Yeah, she's no, a lady. Let's no. hear it, Big O. No, I'm Come not on. singing. Big O, yes, you are. Mm-hmm. One time, Let's you remember it. Mm-hmm. So, but but Come Ricky on. comes in the next day, and Ricky was like our dad. You know, mm-hmm. he was he was cool, and he was fun right up until he wasn't. Yeah. And then and he, then was, he was the disciplinary. You were as scared of him as you would have been a grizzly bear. <laughs> Ricky comes mm-hmm. in. And he's holding when he walks into our class because she's left a note. Really enjoyed the FFA choir. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in holding that paddle, and he said, uh, "Two things going. One or two things going to happen here today, boys." And we're all like, "Oh no, what's that, Mister Ray?" He said, "Y'all are going to reperform all of these songs that y'all sang, or." I'm going to whip every one of you with this board right here. So we line up. Line up. <laughs> get us in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, she's a lady on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. That's clever. Oh, Mr. Ray, boy, he, he kept us moving now. She's a lady. My wife is, is to, say the, to say it mildly, she is visually impaired. Like she has no idea that it's daylight outside right now. Like she's just going through life like blinded. And uh, out of nowhere, and she's tiny, and this is a big boat. And uh, she looks out into the ocean, like off to our side. And we're we've got ten people in the boat. We're 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 going forty five fifty miles an hour, and we're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And she says, "Look at that big boat. Mm-mm. They're flying." Mm-mm. And I I looked over there. I said. Oh, is that the Coast Guard? <laughs> that would be a Coast Guard cutter. Yeah, I mean it was a, it was a, like a ship. <laughs> I said well, I that they going. are going fast, and I just kept driving. So, hearing about 
probably more like 10 minutes, but it seemed like two, like these little go fast boats come out of nowhere. I'm thinking, how y'all doing? <laughs> and uh, they're like, cut the engine off, cut the engine off. And they're like standing out there, like, like out the cabin of this boat. And they've got oh, automatic rifles goodness. and shotguns. And I'm like, well, we've made somebody mad. Somebody, yeah, we've messed up somewhere. So anyway, we're sitting there, and uh, I said, "What are y'all boys doing?" They said, "We're co- we're coming aboard your vessel." I said, "You want me to drop anchor?" They said, "No, we do this all the time." You got anything on board that you shouldn't have? I said, well, "I got a rusty knife right here that we was cleaning fish with yesterday." My wife said, like, "Scott, just shut up, just, <laughs> just hush, shut." I said, "Well, they're asking questions." <laughs> yeah. Kind of tell them the truth. So anyway, the guy just comes on and just, boom, he's over in our boat before we know it. And he said, what are y'all doing down here? I said, you ain't going to believe this, but we're riding in a boat. <laughs> and There's uh, a helicopter over. There. There's <laughs> an airplane. There's two helicopters. No. There, there's go fast boats like the like the Fort Lauderdale police or Coast Guard. What are y'all Miami, doing down here? Miami Dade, ATF, like I mean Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the whole the whole crew's there. Everybody but Mickey Mouse didn't see him. I guess he's still at Disney World. But anyway, um, we're sitting out there, and he said, uh, "I'm gonna ask you one more time. Do you have anything on the boat that you shouldn't have?" Nope. No, we're good. And he said, "Well, do you have any square grouper on the boat?" I said, well, buddy, we went fishing with this old boy down in the Bahamas, and, and he took us out, and we filleted all the fish, and 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 we froze them all. I said, I, I mean, we caught some grouper, but I think they were strawberry grouper. He says, son, square grouper's cocaine. <laughs> and I said, Lord, no. I said, I'm a diabetic. The only, the only, the only coke we got is in 12-ounce cans, and you have them all. I said, I'm a diabetic. <laughs> I said, the only coke we got is in twelve ounce cans. You can have them all. And uh, I said, I don't run. I said, I don't run no dope. I said, I, I teach school for a living. And he said, well, Where do you teach school at? And I said, North Alabama. He said, Hold on. He said, Y'all pulled this camouflage aluminum boat from Alabama to Miami and then drove it across the Bermuda Triangle to 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 the Bahamas. I said, Yeah. Here we, we are. Here said, we are. I said, hey, said we're well, on our way back now. I said, we done this last year. And he said, why? <laughs> and I said, well, it's a good vacation. And uh, I said, we, we take this thing duck hunting all over the country in the, in the, in the summertime. And I don't know that he was buying our story. Yeah, and he hadn't like, bought in yet. He's like, well, where all do you take your boat? I said, well, I've drove it to the Statue of Liberty. We've drove it. From Maine all the way down to Miami, we drove it to the Bahamas. I said uh, we've we've had it in Washington State. We've we drove it to Alcatraz. And one of the old boys that was on the boat was actually from Washington State, and he said, "Well, I'm from Washington State." He said, "Where'd you drive it at in Washington State?" I said, "Well, we took the ferry from Seattle to Clinton, and and uh, we put the boat in and hunted Whidbey Island." He said. They're telling the truth. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I'm telling you the truth. I, I ain't said, got no reason to lie to you. I ain't you. got no reason to lie to you. He said, sir, we've been trying to get in touch with y'all for 30 minutes. I said, well, what you need? And he said, uh, you know, we just we just don't see this very often. We can't believe it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I said, well, you know, I didn't have my ship to shore radio on. And they checked everything. And and, and luckily, luckily, um. We we had everything we needed, and to make a long story short, if you were going hunting, fishing, to the grocery store, if you're going Christmas shopping or just to church on Sunday, you're, there's no telling what you're going to run into with us. All right, we're back with the final round. We've got Brian Sneed one more time. Back again. And Mr. Caleb Horton. So this story has got to be told. I'm ready. Uh, this is a story uh, from a land far, far away, land of North Dakota. <laughs> yeah. We have a house in North Dakota that we go up every year and enjoy God's creation. We like to hunt, duck hunt, pheasant hunt, do a little upland hunting. So my buddy Caleb came down or came up uh, one year and um, loved it. He's been up. How many How many times have you been? I've, North- I've been twice. Twice. Yeah. So, 
we have a house that you can fit six you can sleep six people in the beds if you want to sleep more than that they're going to be on the floor but the house only has one bathroom the house was built in uh the early 1900s so it's over 100 years old one bathroom and so as you can imagine with six or eight guys uh it can be challenging to to take care of your needs and so uh Every morning, uh, in one of the bedrooms, there's three three different beds. Caleb and I and some other guy was sleeping in one in that bedroom. Every morning, um, I would get up first thing in the morning and get a shower because I like to get a shower in the morning, and uh, I would get that out of the way before anybody else got up. And about the third day, I came in there. And Caleb said, Brian, gosh, you got to hurry up. I've got to use the bathroom. And I said, well, heck, Caleb, go outside. He said, well, it's too cold. We're, uh, we're in North, we're North Dakota. Dakota. The wind blows 50 mile an hour. You Not know, North it, Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. North Dakota. And, you know, and, it's, the and top. it's 10 degrees. <laughs> yeah. So um, I said, he said, I've, I'm having to go out the window. You know, I'm going to have to pee out the window on the second story because you're in the shower. Light bulb went off. In ding, my ding, ding, Mr. Ding. Jokester. So we got the hose, water hose, and roped it around the backside of the house and got it ready that, that night before. And uh, um, everything, the water spout was on it so we could get a good high stream. And that next morning I got up, I went downstairs, I went around the house and waited. And I got another guy. With me, we waited and waited and waited and waited and and no Caleb, you know. And so I went back up. I was going to say, I'll go back upstairs and act like I'm getting out of the shower. I went back upstairs halfway up. A guy said, here he comes. So I ran back down. And, uh, well, all we see is, uh, you know, the, the window going up. You know, you have to kind of jostle it up. And, uh, and at that time, we squirted the water hose. And you ought to heard... The yelling and screaming, and and later on, Caleb said, "I thought that I had peed on, so, on so, the electrical on on so the electrical line." This this is a two story house, and uh, right outside, probably they don't have codes in North Dakota. Yeah, I like obviously not. No. Well, what's this town? What's it called? It's Woodworth. Woodworth. Yeah, the Wood Duck Inn. Yeah, six feet. Outside that window, there's the power lines running through the backyard. Well, I thought the stream was just a little strong. <laughs> you got a little pressure on it this well, morning. Yeah. So the other day, I'm at the fire department, and we get a call. Uh, power line's down. So here we go, bebopping out through there. And we get there, and it, it kind of, rem- you know, Stuff like this, like we're doing today, and it don't happen anymore. And mm-hmm. there's there's not a good group of guy friends that get together much anymore. And we pull up, and uh, we get off the truck and kind of see what's going on. And this younger guys, and and they're out there with a track hoe and a dozer and skid steer, and this is Saturday nice like this and i'm like those guys are having the time of their life they, they have and they're they're tearing the house down and uh what they done is the weather head was still on the house and they they knocked the wall down we just pulled the whole power oh, line down oh every. gosh and uh of course that ain't the story but anyways i got to talking to them and uh somehow these guys know seth in Rome, and these guys have been to the Duck Inn. To the Duck Inn. Yeah. So the story is, those guys, they're paying twenty five hundred dollars a week to stay at the Duck Inn, and I'm sitting there thinking, that's high. <laughs> that's not what the, I charge. No, no, the Duck Inn. That yeah, the, the Duck, duck Inn. Inn. <laughs> that's the Duck Inn. <laughs> It's about the quality right there. In Woodworth, North Dakota, you can buy a mansion. Mm -hmm. You'll probably own a third of the state for (laughs) $100,000. No offense. I mean, it's just just cheap up there. Cheap land. 
So these guys, I think they see that when they get up there. They're like, there's no way. This ain't worth $2,500. This, $2, this is not $2,500. This guy's getting rich. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they start calling around and trying to figure out who owns this house. Well, they they find out Seth Laney because they're from Rome. And uh, so they find out one of their buddies that's with them is getting his whole trip paid for. Now, they're up there for two weeks. <laughs> so $5,000 to stay in, in the Duck Inn. Mm. And this this guy has conned them out of paying for his whole trip. That's incredible. And it's like, what, 800 a week? Maybe it's sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a week. Okay, so well, he was making eight hundred a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's making money off mm -hmm. of them. And uh, but anyways, we get to talking, and I'm like, I know where these guys are at. Yeah, and I said, that's close to Pettybone. He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, you ever go to the harvester? Yeah, yeah. Real sweet lady. Mm -hmm. She cooks everything, you know. And she, her husband, he guides. I said, his name Chris. How do you know that? She said, I know everything. I know everything. <laughs> I, know everything. <laughs> right, I, I, know. I got another. Oh, you got you, is that it? No, no, but it was just you can't go anywhere in the world without running in. I mean, that's a story for. And I tell my kids, even at early age as they are right now, you know. Don't ever do something that you don't want Jesus to see. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> because somebody's, somebody's watching, watching somewhere. And you knew Jesus is watching too. I've been a lot of places in the world and I've always known somebody there. Somebody somebody come come back yes. around. You you talking about the duck in again, this was my first experience this year, uh, Caleb. We we got there and we we had to cook our own food, right? Because there's nothing in Woodworth. Nothing in hmm. Woodworth to eat. So we have to gather on food and all. And so the, that first night, we well, when we when we come in, there's a stench. Okay, does it smell like these hog guts? It doesn't that smell. Like, it's not as actually what, the hog guts smelt better. Smell better than what the was stench. in the duck in wasn't boiled and crab bowl. It was not boiled and crab bowl. It was. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was probably a six or eight inch gopher rat somewhere mm -hmm. that had met his demise. Well, so. The the duck in is stinking, you know, and and but we're hungry. We got to get we 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 travel twenty you drive twenty four hours. 24 so you don't hours. stop. You straight. drive straight twenty four straight. So we get there. I'm tired. Everybody's tired, but we're still we we gonna get something to eat. Get ready to cook. And I I forget we, we were cooking fried potatoes or something of that nature. So we were getting the uh the oven ready. And Bubba, which is he's here today. It's Brian's twin brother. He said. Don't worry about it. We're going to cook it out of the. <laughs> we we determined it's in the yeah. oven. Whatever We're it is, is in the out. oven. We're going to cook it out, mm. right? He turns the oven up on five hundred, and I don't know if y'all have ever in your life smelled <laughs> five hundred degree rat or not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I got to smell it that night, okay? And I I have determined in myself my my own self. I'm not hungry anymore, okay? Not hungry anymore. But Brian, Brian's like, Shane, it's going to be fine. We're going to cook. Gonna okay. Everybody's going to get, gonna, it's going to be fine. Well, they go to skin the ducks and I'm, I'm in charge of something around the kitchen. I'm, I'm on the kitchen and I, I'm, I'm looking at the top of the stove and I look and I see one of the, one of the rats brothers, he sticks his head out of the eye. Mm. <laughs> looks up at me I said I'm done <laughs> I am done okay he and and so I said you gotta be kidding me he looks at me he goes back in the oven in the oven in the, he the is oven. living in the oven okay well then here in a minute I open the oven door he runs out of the out of the actual oven down into the floor and I said Brian every one of us are gonna die with some sort of poisoning okay well, we can't eat what are we doing we cooked it again. Bubba turned it on 500. He just let her eat. Let her eat for mm -hmm. about 10, 15 minutes and said, We're good. And somehow or another, we lived through it, didn't we, Bubba? We had, we had, Still here till we had some very good food that week, but that was, we had some great food. That was it. I, when the, when the rat come out and looked at me, I thought, I'm not going to do it. Six guys on a hunting trip, there's going to be some shenanigans. Shenanigans. Some and, jokes told. And my, so, we ate a great lunch, and she had dessert. What was what churros. was it? churros? 
So a churro is a fried pastry pastry with some white, you know, cream on the inside. Uh, like cream cheese. Cream filling. cheese. So we had a great idea to bite the end of this churro and and get a straw and take <laughs> all of the cream cheese out of it, right? So we're beating the cream cheese. And Heidi gives us mayonnaise. Oh. <laughs> and we we squirt mayonnaise through into the churro um, and then put the little end back on, put it on my brother's plate, uh, come in. You know, he comes in from the bathroom and we're just chatting and and he's eat, he takes the first bite and everybody is like looking out of the corner of their eye, trying to keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he just eating, talking, you know, eating his churro and we're thinking, the more what is he's going eating, on? The, the, the less I can hold it together, oh, Philip. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> every, with every bite, I get a little, little more loose, a little more loose until I cannot hold it he anymore. He powers it down, the whole thing? He, he is not, so, you know, he's the, probably the first time ever he's had a churro. Yeah. So he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know what a churro is supposed to taste like. He doesn't like. know what it's supposed to taste like. So Heidi and Shane lose it. I mean, laughing hysterically. I was <laughs> chewing on his churro, looking at me, <laughs> looking at Heidi, just still chewing, chewing and saying. And everybody's looking at Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the attention of everybody. What's you know what wrong? I thought What's you were going to say? <laughs> I thought you were going to say you just you just put a straw in it, <laughs> <laughs> and then just was going to see if he, when he took a bit bite out over there's a straw in the middle of the chair. No, 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 it plastic. was fill, filled with mayonnaise. Maybe an idea for next year. Yeah. And when he ate the entire churro filled with mayonnaise, and 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 so I'm hysterically laughing, cry, crying tears crying tears, wiping them away. And Bubba just finally looks and says, what's so funny? <laughs> I'm enjoying my cheer up. <laughs> Bubba yeah. thought he missed a great story. He wanted a little story. <laughs> yeah. I, they finally told him and he was like, it tasted really good to me. And I said, <laughs> man. Heidi a new idea, a new recipe. New I, I, idea, I, new recipe. He churro, had a churro full of mayonnaise. It had enough sugar on the outside. It didn't matter what it was on the inside. It didn't matter what was on the inside. Thank you guys for letting us uh, do this today and coming out. Get a little bit of the Hayden Alabama podcast right. on the road. Alabama. On the road. We're going to sign off this Hayden Alabama podcast. I'm Philip. I'm Shane. I'm Brian. I'm Caleb. We'll see you next time.